Yeah, let me see if I can come up with an example here. So the indicator I usually go to for these types of questions here is the order flow cumulative delta, right? The cumulative delta. So you'll notice that, right, the cumulative delta, its calculate is set to on each tick, right? So most order flow indicators have to run on each tick. So they have, right, so they can calculate from that bid ask data that's only available, you know, from the bar that's building. So if you're using an indicator that requires the calculate to be on each tick, well, you also have to have to take Bloodhound and change Bloodhound so that it also calculates on each tick, right? So that's a requirement of NinjaTrader, right? So if you're going to use some kind of, you know, order flow indicator inside a Bloodhound, well, Bloodhound, or, I'm sorry, NinjaTrader requires that Bloodhound you know, think of Bloodhound as the hosting indicator, right? And this cumulative delta, that is the guest indicator, you know, being run from within inside of Bloodhound. So NinjaTrader requires Bloodhound to also run on each, on each tick in order for things to run correctly. All right, so let's get this up and going here. All right, so just a moment while Ninja calculates the order flow indicator. There we go. Oh, actually, let me change the period to bar. There we go. All right, so if you're using, you know, some kind of indicator that requires calculate on each tick in Bloodhound, well, what's going to happen here... All right, so I'm just going to create kind of a simple example here. So I'm going to take a threshold solver. All right, so with this threshold solver, I'm just going to do a real simple kind of test here. I'm just going to see, you know, is, is the cumulative delta, you know, above or below the zero line there? And this will illustrate the issue that you'll probably come across. All right, so I have my cumulative delta and I changed my period to bar so it matches what's on my chart. And then we're just gonna simply look at the delta closing price here. So I have that selected for both long and short signals. So if the delta close goes above zero or below zero, I mean, that's that's simply all I'm going to identify here like that. All right. And also take note down here, right? Bloodhound saying, all right, a new multi time frame indicator has been added. Well, right. This order flow cumulative delta is a multi time frame indicator. It uses one tick data, right? So. I do need to, let's close this out. So I need to do an F5 on the chart, reload that chart. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, so we look right here on this bar here that's building. We literally just saw that it went from green to red, right? Now it's red. And right, so this, the signals are you know, going from red to green to red to green, flip-flopping back and forth while this bar is building, right? Maybe if we're lucky, it'll flip back to green on us. We can just see it one last time here. Eh, maybe not. Yeah, it looks like the bid volume's going to win out this time. Oh, there we go. Okay, new bar. Let's see if this bar is going to go from green to red on us while that bar is building here. Oh, come on. There we go. We're almost there. There we go. Right? Green to red. Right? So you you know, so the point is that when the point is is that when you, you when you're 
working with a calculate, you know, set to on each tick, right? You're going to get signals, you know, flip flopping from long to short, long to short. So, so Amir's question is, you know, is there a way to prevent this and wait for the bar to close, right? Um, so technically speaking, you, no, you cannot, um, you cannot get the signal on bar close. What you have to do is, you know, because the calculate mode is running in real time, what you're doing is you're actually waiting for the next bar to open, which effectively is the same thing as, as waiting for the bar to close. Um, so, so when the bar, a bar closes when the next bar opens, right? So there actually is, there really is no bar close action within NinjaTrader. Really what it is, is when the next bar opens, the opening of the next bar is what closes the previous bar, right? So there really is, yeah, no closing of a bar without the next bar opening, right? The opening again, so just to be clear, the opening of a bar is what closes the previous bar. So a bar will stay open indefinitely until a new bar opens, right? So a bar will never close until the next bar opens, right? So those two um, actions are uh, tied together uh, yeah, they're completely tied together. Yeah, so what we're so what you can do is you can get a signal by waiting for the next bar to open. So that way you're not getting you know that way you're not getting signals that are just flip flopping from long to short, long to short. And so the way you do that, right? So this is a bit of a technical uh, condition here to kind of understand it. It requires a bit of a lengthy explanation, um, right? So what you do is, um, you know, just think of, you know, think of this as like your entire system, right? So you're probably going to have a whole system back here doing something. So I guess just for good measure, right, most systems here usually end with an AND node, right? So let's say this is your, you know, your last, your, your signal AND node, all right. So this is your last AND node in the, in your entire system here. Um, whichever node, you know that that you have the last node that you have connected to your result node. What you do is you can take a look back node, and what this look back node will do is this displacement function. Right. We're going to leave it set to one because that's what we want to use is this displacement function here and I'll, I'll rename this All right so remember from the previous question we said that the displacement takes the previous bars output and shifts it forward onto the current bar right so what I've just done is so on this bar here, right? so this short output, this short output, right, from Bloodhound is actually coming from the previous bar. And actually, here's a good illustration over here, right? So if we look at this, right, we can see, well, this, you know, our cumulative delta, right, it's green. Right, so it's a positive cumulative delta, right? So normally, if we if we you know remove the displacement, so let's connect that up, right? So without this displacement, right, Bloodhound is going to say, oh, right, your cumulative delta is positive, so that's going to be a, a long signal. So with this displacement, right, we took we took this um, positive cumulative delta, 
shifted it onto the next bar. But because we're operating in real time, this shift takes place as soon as this bar opens, right? So as soon as this opens, the long signal, right, from the previous bar was placed onto, you know, this bar as soon as this bar opened. So if we watch this here, so, right, our cumulative delta is positive and as soon as the next bar opens which should be hopefully soon right we're on a one minute chart here so when the next bar opens we're going to get that long signal as soon as it opens immediately and we'll just have to wait here and kind of watch it there we go boom as soon as this bar opens right the long signal from here popped on here and we have a long signal, right? And of course, this long signal is never going to change because it's coming from the previous bar, right? And this previous bar is already closed, so it's never going to change. So that's, yeah, permanent there, right? So that's how you do that. That's how you basically kind of simulate your signals operating on bar close when... Bloodhound is actually operating on each tick, right? Or it's calculating on each tick. But this displacement, you know, kind of simulates as if it's running with the calculate on bar close. Now, of course, when you do this, you can't backtest this, um, right? This this isn't, NinjaTrader doesn't have a way to backtest this kind of stuff because all your signals are coming in late. Right when you're back testing, you're back testing on the bar close, and so you know, and we can see right that, um, yeah, if we go back here, right, we can see that you know historically looking, all these signals look like they're coming in one bar late, and for Ninja Trader's back testing engine, they are coming in one 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 bar late, you know, but of course, uh, you know, for this to all function correctly it has to function in real time so it'll work correctly in real time but if you back test it all the signals are coming in one bar late so it can't properly be back tested um, unless unless you use ninja traders playback connection so that's kind of a another uh, a secondary uh, purpose for ninja's playback connection so that you can backtest these systems that require real-time kind of data, right? So that playback connection is simulating real simulating real-time data. So that's how you can backtest these 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 systems like that. So, all right. So that does it for that questionnaire. Pretty pretty simple. Just use that. Uh, Look back node, and you don't have to you don't have to make any adjustments to the look back node. Its default settings uh, with the displacement of one is is all you need there. So okay, so there you go. All right, it looks sounds like a mer. Uh, got his question answered.